in English. Merci beaucoup, Edouard. So in his 18 July letter to the coalition, CDPQ VP Blanchard says respect for human rights is essential to the CDPQ and that it is following the situation in Palestine very closely. Is that true? If so, the CDPQ should be aware of the July 19th advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice, which states, in short, that Israel is imposing its authority over the occupied Palestinian territory by force in flagrant violation of international law. The court therefore calls on all international actors not to lend any aid or assistance to the maintenance of the occupation and on the contrary to do everything in their power to put an end to this situation. This includes investors such as the CDPQ. How is the case fulfilling this obligation? We presented four examples of investments that are involved in violations of international law and constitute war crimes. Four examples among 87 companies. Those were WSP Global, a Montreal-based engineering firm in which the CDPQ is the majority shareholder, Alstom, which owns Bombardier Transport, Caterpillar, and Lockheed Martin. In its previous statements, the case attempted to deny or minimize the involvement of Alstom and WSP in rail transport projects, namely the Jerusalem Light Rail project and the Tel Aviv-Jerusalem rail line, these projects that cut through the occupied Palestinian territory. The rails are on stolen Palestinian land in violation of international law. We demonstrated with abundant supporting documentation that these two companies are directly involved in violations of international law. As for Caterpillar, it supplies the Israeli army with heavy machinery used for numerous crimes against the Palestinian people, including the construction of illegal settlements and the separation wall, repression of demonstrations with armored bulldozers, destructions of thousands of Palestinian homes, extrajudicial executions of Palestinians. Finally, the Israeli army uses these vehicles to kill civilians, as was the case last December, when Caterpillar armored bulldozers were used to bury alive the wounded outside Hazaz Kamal Adwan Hospital. This is not just the view of the coalition or of numerous UN experts who've denounced it. It's also the view of KLP, Norway's leading pension fund, which decided last June to exclude Caterpillar from its portfolio. What is the CDPQ waiting for to follow KLP's lead? Lockheed Martin supplies Israel with several types of weapons, including F-16 and F-35 fighter jets. When the Israeli army makes an airstrike, it's usually with a Lockheed Martin plane. These planes are regularly used to drop bombs weighing up to 900 kilos. That's 2,000 pounds. Bombs that can kill and injure people up to a kilometer from their point of impact. We're talking an area 10 times the size of Le Parc La Fontaine. These bombs are so powerful that even the U.S. Army has stopped using them in densely populated areas. What does Israel do? It uses them to bomb refugee camps, to bomb hospitals, to bomb schools all over the Gaza Strip. And with what do they carry out these strikes? Aircraft sold by Lockheed Martin. So every time Israel massacres Palestinians, Lockheed Martin profits, the CDPQ profits, and through the CDPQ, it's all Quebecois who have blood on their hands. Is that what is meant by the highest standards of ethical investment? We put the question to the CDPQ yesterday. They refused to answer. We believe there's only one possible answer divest immediately from Lockheed Martin, Caterpillar, WSP, Alstom, and the 83 other companies complicit with violations of international law and war crimes in which your pension money is invested. Thank you.
Euh, Karine Poirier, directrice des affaires publiques. Catherine Simard, directrice de l'investissement durable. Enrimi Méo-Martin, conseiller expert euh, en, en relations humaines. As soon as the meeting started, they said that they were only there to listen, understand, and report to their JRT. Catherine Poirier and uh, Karine Poirier and Catherine Simard look like they listened to this information for the first time of the, in their life, although they were warned for almost two years by various parties that their investments in occupied Palestinian Palestine were at least problematic, since 87 companies are actu actively involved in grave violations of human rights and war crimes. Those investments affect negatively the reputation of the CDPQ and, uh, ensure, uh, and, make, and ensure that uh, the badland des Québécois is stained with blood. It's certain that the case goes further than listening and takes action to conform itself with international law as should do a company that pretends to achieve the highest ethical standards. Concerning Rémi Méo-Martin, uh, Méo he seemed more pre preoccupied by red paint on the doors of the case uh, building than by the real blood of Palestinian in Gaza. Here are the highest ethical standards. Good looking seems more important than real behavior. Listening is not enough. That's why we have for meeting with the board of the case. Meanwhile, our determination and mobilization will go on. Thank you. This seemed very intent on underlying how open they were to dialogue with civil society. They even call this meeting dialogue. We don't. A dialogue requires an exchange. A dialogue is incompatible with a monologue. They put us in a monologue position. They refused to answer any and all questions we put to them. This after two years of repeated interventions by a variety of actors, as have been mentioned earlier. So it's not like they don't know, they don't want to admit, and mostly they don't want to change. What does this mean? This means very simply that they are very attached to continuing to make money on the backs of Palestinians. That's all they care about. All these highest ethical standards have, I think, been clearly demonstrated to be false, and I'll be polite. Thank you. I can do the question in uh, uh, short in English. So it was asked about uh, how how those uh, those uh, fourteen point two billion dollars of investments. What are the returns? And uh, our point is is that uh, we there does, there's been examples of other funds like uh, K KLP, the largest uh, Norway's pension fund, uh, who have divested, and they haven't seen any uh, any negative impact on their returns. And uh, profits, uh, on the contrary, like they, they profited, like they, they found it like easy and simple and straightforward to apply the principles of international law and to be coherent with those values. Also, there's no like there's no there's no profit justifying like the loss of human lives and the violations of international law. So if that's the position of the of the CDPQ, well, they're wrong. And uh, also. Um, what was my last point? Trust. trust. Okay, yeah, so also the, the population in Quebec is putting trust into the CDPQ to manage its money. That trust is invaluable, and that trust is going to be lost if the CDPQ continues to invest that money in companies that use it to kill Palestinians and to destroy their homeland. Okay, so thank you for the question. Uh, it's about um, the importance of divesting from companies beyond the weapons trade companies. 
So just to make uh, come back to, to the point that was made earlier about um, the recent advisory opinion of the, in, the International Court of Justice, um, the International Court of Justice said 20 years ago um, in the case concerning the separation wall that Israel built that, that annexed 10% of uh, the West Bank, that um, the whole uh, colonization project is uh, a violation of international law. And then, you know, international law advances progressively. Over the, the last 20 years, then several more interlocutors, UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, for example, various UN Special Rapporteurs, concluded that not only are these colonies, so these are Israeli Jewish settlements on stolen Palestinian land in, in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. So not only are these colonies, these settlements, a violation of international law, they are a war crime. Why are they a war crime? Because the 1949 Geneva Convention on the Protection of Civilians, adopted about four years after the end of World War II, makes it a crime to transfer population from the occupying power. So that, we're talking about military occupation. It's been lasting for 50 years, since 1967. So Israel, by transferring its Jewish citizens from Israel proper into Palestine, which is under military occupation, is committing the war crime of transfer of population. So every and any company that carries out business in any and every Israeli illegal settlement is complicit with the war crime of transfer of population from the military power. And this has been repeatedly brought to the attention of the CDPQ. This was made very clear in the letters that I had the honor of coordinating with six uh, eminent, uh, world-renowned experts of international law that agreed to co-sign and go on the record telling the CDPQ, you are complicit with the war crime. Uh, uh, that constitute these Israeli settlements. So that's why it's so important to divest not just from the Lockheed Martins and the Caterpillars, but the WSPs and the Alstoms and every other company in which the CDPQ has invested the pension funds of the Quebec population in um, the occupied Palestinian territory. C'est bon? Je reprends français? Okay. Donc, la question... The board of the guests because we want a dialogue, not only to explain our position. But uh, we also uh, 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 we will also continue to mobilize. There were camps this uh, summer. There will be demonstrations. There will be letters, petitions, and things like that. So uh, it, it's not. It's important to sensibilize the, the public opinion in Quebec to uh, let them know, and you have a role in that, to let them know that the case is involved in dirty business. And we will do that. Yes, I'd like to add one thing. We're not negotiating with the case. There's $14.2 billion of investment that need to be retrieved, period, in 87 companies, period. We're not going to negotiate that it's 35 companies and, five, and 4 billion. And there's no negotiation. It has to do with human rights. It has to do with international law. And these investments are highly problematic and have to end. That's it. So we pleaded that with the case yesterday after a lot of other people and what is actually more important than our meetings is that actions be organized that or different organizations in civil society debate this issue in their own decision-making bodies take a stand on this that trade unions take a stand on this that their pension money should not be invested in this type of companies and this type of economic activities and this is where the core of the issue lies in mobilizing civil society and exercising pressure against these investments. As we write here, Canada as a country is complicit. Western countries have generally been complicit with Israel for decades. 
this is not going to change just because we tell them it's against international law. They know that. They've known that for years and years. So at the coalition, certainly at Collective des Investis pour la Palestine, we consider that, you know, mobilization is central to making this change, not more meetings. <laughs> if they ask to meet with us, the board will go for sure. But that's not what's going to make the decision for the case. It's how bad they look and how bad they look is how people are aware and protest against that. <laughs>